Sergeant Brandon Blackmore. Uh, Specialist Scott Bissett. PFC Charlie. Thomas J. Hondo. Uh, first Lieutenant. My name is Private First Class Keith Goings. I'm sorry, Rebecca Winsport. My name is Private Richard Elliott. Command Sergeant Major William Wade. Gunn. I'm 36. I'm 18 years old. I am 26 years old. 21. 18 years old. I'm 30 years old. 24 years old. 21 years old. I'm part of the 173rd Airborne. I'm with Chosen Company, 2nd of the 503rd. I'm 1st of the 508. Third platoon leader in uh, Bravo Company, 5th. Senior Enlisted Advisor. I live for 1800 soldiers. Somewhere in the world, people are sleeping in warm beds. Tonight, they will not know that you'll be lying in mud, nor will they know that you'll patrol broken ground with heavy loads while they sleep in safe houses. When they hear about you on the news, they'll admire you for your courage, and they'll be impressed with your skill. But they won't know how truly good you are. give them confidence, keep them not on edge and try to keep the, the nerves down. No one's really n nervous yet. They haven't, as soon as we plug, plug them into Aviano, then they'll start feeling the, when they start getting issued live ammo, then they'll start realizing that will start giving them thoughts of where they've been in their training and what they're fixed to encounter. It's kind of an area of uncertainty for us. I think they understand best of what the commander, the company commander, and, and the community is in the operation order. But again, uh, things change in the air. Comes down to the leadership, the leadership institutes those standards within the youth and how they spend the time to develop them and then work toward ethics and their war ethos that come from the leadership and how to bring them on and the soldier's ability and desire to be number one, to be the best, to be all you can be. I never thought I would do this. It's overwhelming. I felt so many feelings. Nervous, scared. Not so much worry, it's just, um, just not in so. I feel pretty honored to carry on legacy. My dad was in the Marines and he was in Vietnam, but he's never jumped in when he was in the airport. But considering that I could carry on something that he did, Joined the Army in 93, definitely a, a lot of responsibility. I think that is one of the reasons why I became an officer, though. Um, I, I might owe a lot to the soldiers. And, uh, you know, hope I can do my best to live up to uh, what I owe them. It's pretty much sure everybody's home. I think they're all pretty excited. I think uh, a lot of them, this is what they joined the Army for. Um, not, you know, money for college, and they joined the paratroopers. I think that's what makes us unique among other people in the Army. I think that's what separates us from the rest of the Army. I joined the Army after September 11th, got rid of my house, got rid of my car, got rid of a really nice paying job because I, you get to a certain point in your life and something's drastic and momentous as 9-11 was that you begin to change your values as to what you really believe in. I heard a report a while back when it first happened that at least a thousand, thousand kids had lost parents at the end. That's, that's something that a child should never have to go through. And somebody needs I'm not saying that I'm the best or the greatest person, but somebody has to give stand up for kids they can. So it's, in one sense, it's too much to try to think about because it's, it's such a big thing. And in hindsight, we'll probably look at it and go, wow, it's really, really big. But right now, it's, it's just another day. I don't know 
I left. I don't know why I left. But I know it won't be long. But I know it won't be long. No, it won't be long. No, it won't be long. Till I get back home. Uniform and black boots for feet. Eighteen and wild as hell, thought it would be neat. He put me on a plane to some strange foreign land. I said goodbye to mom, dad, and hello to Uncle Sam. Once I was a soldier, not afraid to die. Now I'm a little older and not afraid to cry Every day I'm thankful just to be alive When you've been where I've been any kind of life is paradise One thousand American troops own up the second front in northern Iraq with one of the largest parachute drops since World War II. About 1,000 U.S. paratroopers have secured an airfield in northern Iraq. Members of the Army's 173rd Airborne Brigade parachuted into the Kurdish-controlled area under the cover of darkness. The military... Entered its second week with more than 1,000 members of the U.S. 173rd Airborne Brigade parachuting into Kurdish-held territory in northern Iraq. United. I've never experienced anything like it. These guys, they're 19, 20 years old. This is their first time in the situation, jumping into combat. In fact, it was the first time that the brigade had done a combat jump since Vietnam. It was absolutely electrifying. Uh, well, all the men are feeling fine. Uh, we land with all our equipment. We are digging in positions right now to uh, just uh, set up uh, a perimeter uh, at first, and then uh, we just take everything uh, day by day as the uh, situation develops. I really don't know what to expect. You don't, you don't train for to expect things. You just train for everything. So you can react to anything that the command may throw at you. It's really strange that we're actually here. It doesn't seem like we're in Iraq, but hopefully, uh, I, I really look forward to seeing how the plan develops and see what our part is going to be in the, in the whole play. You can't help but think that the last time this brigade did this was. Uh, almost 30 years ago now, and to have it just be reactivated and conduct a combat jump was, was pretty awesome to be a part of it. It really is humbling to see these guys get aboard an aircraft willing to risk their lives for, uh, for very little turn, except to uh, take care of each other, maybe an occasional thank you. So much to live up to. Uh, tremendous attrition, a lot of responsibility to live up to uh, what we do. Americans, it's in their blood.